What's up, Memo fam? Welcome to the new year. What better way to start off the new year by hopefully motivating you a little bit by talking about a record that I recently broke. Now, will it be inspirational? I hope so. Not because of the sound bite necessarily that says, wow, Nelson Dulles broke a record, good for him. But more for the story behind it and actually what happened and unfolded the day of the record. It's not as pretty and perfect as it may seem. So hopefully you can take some of the lessons I learned from that experience and maybe apply that to some things you're trying to tackle this year in 2022. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the basics. What was the plan? If you look at my video that kind of explained or announced the record I was gonna go for, it was memorizing the most cards underwater in a single breath. Now, I spent a couple months practicing, getting back into the groove of my cards. Luckily, I had the memory championship a little bit before that, so I had been practicing cards already, so I was kind of in the groove with that. But the big thing I had to work on was holding my breath. When I started, I could maybe do 30 to 40 seconds. But after a lot of practice, I was able to boost that number quite a bit. We'll get into that. So when I had this idea to break this record, I thought about it for years now, but it wasn't until my sponsor, my partner, Mind Lab Pro, who's sponsoring this video, decided to sponsor the entire Guinness record attempt. Why not? A great way for me to put my mind into something knowing that I have some support. While that added the support I needed to do it, it also made a lot more be at stake and a lot more pressure suddenly. They were gonna be there the day of the event, they were gonna film it for me, but it was also for the product, it was for this whole sponsored event, so there was more at stake than just me and my own desire to have a Guinness record. I started training a few months in advance, but I started rigorously training about six weeks before the event. And the event was gonna be on uh, November 13th at the University of Miami pool on campus, so in a place that I was somewhat comfortable and it was a public space. The Guinness record uh, body requires that it be a public space that can be observed by anybody for it to be a valid record. So at first I started practicing in my parents' pool. We live in Miami. I don't have a pool, but my parents do. So every couple times a week, I'd go over to the house and pretty much just work on holding my breath. I started using an app that also helped me practice getting better at holding my breath and my CO2 tolerance. In this case, the breath holds get longer um, and the amount of time I breathe is the same. One minute breathing, one minute 20 of hold, one minute breathing, one minute 25 of holding, and so on and so on. There's 10 rounds, it gets up to two minute holds. And I would do that sometimes in the water, sometimes on land, just in my office, before bed, whatever, whenever I had a moment. And it usually involved two kind of exercises, one where I would hold my breath longer and longer while breathing in between for a fixed amount of time, or kind of the other way around where I would hold my breath for a certain amount of time fixed, but then the amount of time to breathe the air before the next breath hold would get shorter and shorter. And this is kind of what free divers do, this is what surfers do to train their capacity to hold their breath longer. In the end, I was able to get my personal best of holding my breath, and that was three minutes and 45 seconds. I wanted to get to that four minute mark, but three minutes, 45 seconds, I really can't believe that I'm underwater for nearly four minutes without a breath, that was pretty cool. And what was always interesting to me, because I'd never noticed this, but after a while of being underwater, your body naturally starts to convulse. It, it's trying to make you breathe because of the CO2 buildup. And part of the training is to kind of suppress or be able to tolerate that feeling and to push it back to be able to fight through the pain. And I remember when I first started, that feeling kicked in in maybe 20, 30 seconds and then I'd give up maybe 10 seconds after that. But I realized after training, I'd hit maybe a minute before that happened and then eventually a minute 15 before that happened. And then by the end, I was getting to about a minute and a half with no convulsions before my CO2 desire started to make me feel really uncomfortable. A minute and a half, that's pretty awesome. But that's pretty cool because that means that another minute and a half plus was me just fighting this urge of my body convulsing. Now that's cool, but it's also tricky because now that's distracting for when I memorize, right? Imagine convulsing while trying to make sure that you have cards in your mind, right? So I started doing that training and then I started, you know, incorporating the cards underwater. I, I bought a whole set of underwater cards and I basically would do mostly the on land uh, CO2 training, the oxygen breath holding training with the app. And then I would do some training of memorizing, you know, half a deck underwater, easy. 
Then I would do three quarters of a deck underwater. Okay, I could do that. Then I did a whole deck underwater. And I got to a point where I could do that one deck pretty consistently, casually, without much problem. You know, whether I stayed underwater a minute, whether I stayed underwater a full two minutes to be certain I had all the cards, I was good with one deck. So I started focusing more on the breath holding because if I could get more comfortable underwater, I knew that the cards would follow. By the end of that week, I was hitting the record and even breaking the record. I think my highest I ever got was like 79. Maybe I touched 82, I'd have to check. But I felt good. And now what I started to kind of formulate what the plan was gonna be on the day of. Because if I showed up and I did a record attempt and I failed, that's gonna look pretty bad. I didn't wanna disappoint my sponsor. So I decided I was gonna go for two records. There was another record which might serve better as a warm up, and if I got it, at least I'd get my main goal of getting a Guinness World Record. That was always a goal. One thing that I don't have in my memory accolades is a Guinness record. So if I could get one and that's it, no matter what it was, related to memory of course, cool. Goal complete for 2021. So the other record was memorize a single deck of cards underwater, however long it takes, just one deck. And the record is how fast you can reconstruct the deck, basically the recall. That was gonna be what I would do first. Hopefully I'd get that record out of the way. And then I could spend all the time I wanted on the, the most cards memorized underwater record. And if I fail that, if I had to do it a bunch of times, no big deal. So then the week of the event came up and I decided that I would practice entirely at the place where it was gonna happen, at the UM pool. I'm always like that, like when there's a competition coming or some kind of big thing that I need to perform at, I like to have some practice at the place because then when I show up for the actual event, I already have that experience of being there and knowing my surroundings and all that stuff. Usually really helps me. And by the Thursday and Friday, essentially the day or days before, felt really good. I had beaten the record numerous times in my practice sessions. I felt really good. And I had this whole game plan in mind that I was gonna do the first record as a warm up, and then I was gonna go for broke on the second record. Hopefully get it immediately. If I had to do it a few times, I had accounted for that. I got a certain amount of decks of cards prepped. I got all my witnesses and assistant people to help me shuffle the cards, time things, blah, 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 as per the Guinness record rules and I was good to go. Mind Lab Pro showed up the day before to do some kind of behind the scenes filming, and then the morning of, we did a little more filming, and then it was go time. So the day of the record attempt felt really good. I did a few breath holds. I was really on my game getting three and a half minutes to 3.45 minutes uh, breath holding. I was doing a couple decks, not too many. Before I'm about to memorize cards, I don't like to do too many sets of memorizing just to keep it fresh and my memory palace is fresh. And then the event happened. Weather was great, it was warm. And then a group started gathering. There were some news outlets there. It was becoming the real deal. I was getting a bit nervous, but again, I knew that that first record I was gonna go for, that warm up, was something I could do fairly casually. So it started, started recording video, sponsor was recording video, my witnesses were there, everything was in place. I got in the water, the decks were shuffled and handed to me, and I attempted the first record and this is how it went actually just kidding i mean if i were to show you this this is actually the most uninteresting part me breaking the record because nothing goes wrong i do exactly what i said i was going to do so let's kind of zip through this if you really want to watch it detail for detail i'll put the link of the entire video unsped up uncut whatever in the description so in short i had a professional come and shuffle the cards the cards are then handed to a witness i had two of them to help handle the cards in and out of the pool i get in the pool i spend about two minutes kind of pre-breathing making sure I fill up my lungs with air, I get some good exhales, get the CO2 out of my system, blah, 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 go underwater. I do the thing, memorize the cards, riveting stuff, I know. And then I shoot back up, hand the cards to another witness. I spend a moment here just kind of consolidating everything in my mind, making sure I know the order of the deck, which I do. The other witness opens a fresh pack of cards and then I speedily put it in the order of the one that I memorized. It's then verified one by one to see that they match voila guinness record in the books i got it i destroyed the record you could say by a whole minute and then it was time to do the other record the most cards the one i really cared about to be honest because i don't know something about memorizing the most of anything always sounds kind of beefy in my mind but alas it would not be so i went back into the water getting ready to memorize the most cards ever underwater 
I was first going to try something very conservative just to beat the record, which was 67, maybe get 72 or something like that. And then if I did that on the first try, I would do another attempt and really go for broke. I knew that the pressure was on. This is the record that I really wanted. And I flubbed it. I need to try that again. It wasn't my best. And I actually had to give this record a few more tries. It was getting late. The pool was gonna close. The sun was setting. It was getting darker. So I actually gave this record five solid attempts and still couldn't get it. Damn. I will say that my last attempt, the fifth one, was my closest. I got, I think, about 72, 73 cards, but swapping the place of two cards. I can say all I want. I didn't get the record, so it really doesn't matter. Close, but no cigar. Such is the story of my life, right? I get really close to something and I don't quite make it, but that's okay. You know, that's that's kind of, there's a lesson learned there. I got my Guinness record, I'm happy with that, but it allows me to work towards something. In my life, I don't think anything has ever been given to me really easily. I've always had to work at it. Even when I won the memory championship, you know, I was, gonna win in 2010, but I made a mistake in the finals, my own fault. And I had to wait a whole other year. Man, I remember that feeling, just saying, I have to wait a year to really win this? I know I can win it. And it was honestly the best lesson I ever had. And I came back and won it, and it felt even better. And then I won it again and again and again and again. So uh, same goes for Everest, you know, I keep failing. I don't wanna call it failing, I keep coming short on the summit, but I know I'll get it one day. And when I do get it, it'll feel really good. Even more so because I persisted and kept at it. So same with this record. I'm gonna attempt it next year. And not only am I gonna just break it, I'm gonna smash this record. You'll see. So for this year, 2022, hopefully that story is a little interesting, a little insight into you know how I go about things. I know from the surface, it seems like, wow, he breaks records. He wins championships, cool. But I fail a lot. I really fail a lot. I mean, the negative down moments are often really the points that define you. Uh, I've talked about this in many of my memory, memory championship loss videos, is that losing is often better than winning because it really transforms you and you know makes you into a better person or it kind of navigates you towards better things. So 2022, think of all the bad things and, and kind of negative things that have happened to you in the last year or so and just tell yourself that that is going to guide you into this year and even if stuff happens this year that isn't what you want or it's just weighing you down or bad situations are happening to you or you're not quite getting to your goals or you tried everything and you still didn't get your goals it's all part of that journey and it's going to pay off in the end if you persist persist anyways thanks for watching and again a big thank you to mind lab pro for being with me throughout this whole endeavor. I couldn't have done it without them. And if any of you are interested, uh, please check out their products. I'll put links in the description below. Um, I take their supplement every day. It's definitely helped boost my, my memory and focus and attention in the last year or so. That's it for this video. So excited to share some other fun videos I have coming up in the pipeline this year. I'm out.